Hello everybody, this is your host Colin McIsaac with Nintendo Week. This week on the show we talked about our ideas for Mario Kart 8 DLC, things they could do with the future of Mario Kart. It's really great stuff, but it was about a 40 minute discussion, so what we're gonna do here for YouTube is split it up into two chunks of 20 minutes each. The video you're watching right now is part one. In part one we discuss what characters we'd like to see and what crossovers we'd like to see, so that's both characters and tracks from other games like they did with Zelda and Animal Crossing. In part two we talk about what brand new track ideas we'd like to see for Mario Kart, more traditional stuff, as well as what retro tracks we'd like to see come back from older games. And then we talk about new ideas for new features and stuff like how uh, they had 200cc mode in the last update. You don't have to watch one video to appreciate the other, so if you just want to watch this one or you just want to watch the other, that's fine. If you want to watch both, that's even better because we do have really awesome, fun ideas all around. So, enjoy! Hello everybody, we are back with more Nintendo Week. I'm your host Colin McIsaac and as always I'm joined by Alex Plant. It's a me. And Ben Lamoureux. It's a him. I like the format where we go A, B, C, Alex, Ben, Colin uh, <laughs> when we do this discussion. So do you guys want to go with that? Sure. Spotlight's on you, Alex. Don't disappoint us. Um, Honestly, for characters, I don't have any particular burning ones that I want to see in. However, I would like to see more character skins, kind of like we got for the Shy Guys and the Yoshis. Uh, it gets kind oh, of... Oh, you mean like we could have, like, Metal Mario, for example? Yeah, we could have... Or yeah. the Koopalings! That, that would be a fantastic example. Um, <laughs> but, but since obviously all those oh, characters yeah. are in already, I'd like to see things where, where you give... You know, if multiple pl people are in the same room, maybe they have the chance to be a little more visually distinct from each other when they're playing online. Uh, for mm. example, you know, I have to I have to really pay attention to see which of the three Mario players is actually passing me while I'm playing. Uh, I would like to not have to think about that so hard. So maybe you give him a Fire Mario skin, maybe you give him a... Alex, the solution is don't get passed. Um, <laughs> that usually doesn't happen. Get good, Scrub. But on the off chance that it does... I just think it's it's something that they did with with Yoshi and Shy Guy, but I feel like that was a missed opportunity. I feel like there were so there's so many more characters who who could benefit from the skins. Oh, absolutely, and they also they have so many different variations. They have what they have Mario, Metal Mario, uh, Tanuki Mario, Baby Mario wouldn't work as a skin, but I mean still you know they don't have Fire Mario or Ice Mario or anything. Right. Smash does skins. Why can't Mario Kart? Right. Yeah, and and of course obviously it's a missed opportunity for this particular entry, but, you know, it wouldn't be that difficult to have a Tanuki version of everybody as an alternate skin or something like that, but, you right. know, too, too little too late, I guess. So, when I play Mario Kart, I think the most important objective of all is pissing off all your friends. Like, I, I think <laughs> it's just <laughs> universally agreed that that's why people play Mario Kart, right? Oh god, what are you, what are you getting to? <laughs> so, the obvious choice for the next DLC character is Tingle. Because how pissed off are your friends going to be <laughs> when you knock them off the track at the last second as Tingle? <laughs> oh, man. Well, Waluigi already covers that. Not as That's much as issue. Tingle. Um, <laughs> I mean, is that your only your only character? Uh, no, actually, I'd uh, I'd really like to see Samus out then. Mm, good choice. Yeah, I think Metroid fans are you know some of the most diehard Nintendo fans you'll find, and we've seen you know the Zelda series and other things like that. Animal Crossing represent. I don't think you've ever talked to a mother fan. That's true. <laughs> um, or Sanic. Sanic. <laughs> but they're not really that Nintendo. That doesn't count. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think it would be great for, for the Metroid fan base of Nintendo to be represented in, in uh, Mario Kart. Yeah. No, good choice. Um, well, there are five characters that I think... Only five? Well, no, no, no. I, I, I'm just he's, saying... Like, he's narrowed them down to five. You, you, <laughs> <laughs> but you know me. I always get really excited about this stuff and pitch way too many ideas and... But that's because I love Nintendo, and and obviously I have way better ideas than them. Obviously. Uh, <laughs> uh, but there are there are five characters that I think uh, should come back to Mario Kart, and I'm not saying like all of these should be in the DLC, but like these are the ones that I think they should choose from for DLC. Bowser Jr., Diddy Kong, Birdo, King Boo, and Petey Piranha, I think are characters that shouldn't have been removed from Mario Kart at any point. And, uh, well, save for, like, handhelds, because I know those rosters are always smaller. Um, but, um, yeah, I find it very strange that they're not in Mario Kart 8, especially when we've got baby Rosalina and Cat Peach. Uh, Alex, you sounded like you were going to say something. I was just going to break your heart by saying Petey Piranha is a terrible character and you should feel bad for suggesting him. Well, I, I don't care. He's been in Mario Kart before and he has a name. That's that's the criteria for Mario Kart characters is they need to exist and have a name. They're already getting into characters that didn't exist and yeah. don't have names. Yeah. So, like, why? They're not in any 
dearth here for, oh, it's, for it's actual preferable characters. preferable to pink gold peach. That, that's mm -hmm. definitely true. Nothing <laughs> is preferable to pink gold peach. Except possibly pink gold baby Koopalings. <laughs> God. But, you know, I, I say P.D. Piranha not because I think P.D. Piranha is a great character, but because, you know, when characters like Dry Bones and Paratroopa and stuff are getting cut, that makes a lot more sense than cutting a character who's actually a character and not just a generic sort of commonplace enemy. You know what sure. I'm saying? Sure. As for, like, new characters that I think should be added to Mario Kart, and I think it's a crime that they have not been in the past, uh, Toadsworth, because Toadsworth is amazing, he's so much fun, and we have we have Toad and Toadette already, and I would love to see him, we'll, like, wave his cave around, and... I was gonna say, imagine the incredible trick animations. I know, I was gonna say! And he would, like, jump off a ramp and go, yada blah 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 blah! <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Um, so Toadsworth is great. Professor E. Gad... Uh, for a lot of the same reasons. We've talked about how much I love those two characters in the past. Uh, I generally just like crazy old people. <laughs> so it's what Egad you aspire be to be, great. so that doesn't surprise Well, me. yeah, of course. Um, and actually, though, now now that I think about it, Egad would work great uh, for bringing back Luigi's Poltergust car from Mario Kart DS. Yes. Like they brought back the B-Dasher. Um, and then Fawful. Because Fawful is amazing, and... Fawful would be so much fun to see in Mario Kart, and or at least in anywhere other than Mario RPGs. You know, he he would have been like a great Smash Bros. assist trophy, or and I think he'd be a lot of fun as a racer. Yeah, I mean the Mario RPGs do need more representation, uh, mm -hmm. not just not just in Mario Kart, but just across the board, because they really mm -hmm. are just kind of limited uh, to that that side of the universe when there's really so much more potential. Well, and each individual game too, I feel like. Uh, yeah. Like, a, a lot the Bean Bean Kingdom is like never visited again, and then the whole part, all the partners in time locales, they're confined to there. Paper Mario stuff is always just that one game and never even mentioned in passing again. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think it goes without saying that we all wholeheartedly agree that Captain Toad needs to be in it. Oh, that would be great. He must. He must be in it. Yeah. Well, that would be a great skin for Toad if they did the character skins. Well, yeah, that's true. Or, or well, I was going to say maybe make him the default Toad. But, no, because Toad himself classic is Toad is, the best. is kind you of a classic. Yeah. Yeah. But that reminded me, since since there's a lot of Super Mario Brothers 2 elements in Captain Toad, I would love to see more Super Mario Brothers 2 representation. Uh, yeah. Birdo's been cut, obviously. Uh, I'd love to see Wart make it in. Wart's a great character. Yeah, we haven't um, seen Wart ever. No. I mean, he was there was a cameo in uh, in Link's Awakening. What about Tatanga from Mario Land? Yeah, Tatanga, uh, the Mario Land games could could. I remember when that. Galaxy was coming out and people were sort of theorizing that Tatanga would be the bad guy, because you know he's an alien and all that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, the, and there like was that the mysterious ultimate. UFO that we never really find out what that what that's. Oh yeah, about. yeah, that's right. Well, so we sort of started getting into this a little bit, but uh, what about like crossover characters and crossover ideas? So going along with me wanting Samus uh, as part of Mario Kart, I think it would be cool to have like a Norfair track. Uh, really, any of the like major areas from Super Metroid could be done pretty cool as tracks. But I like lava, so let's <laughs> go with Norfair. Norfair, because um, you know, a big part of the Metroid experience is how there's lots of different branching paths, and you can kind of choose oh, which way yeah. you go. And the better you get at optimizing it, the faster you are. And so with Mario Kart, you know, that's obviously a mechanic that could work well with it, and especially when you toss in like the uh, anti-grav areas and things like That's that. That's a really good so, idea. Yeah, you know, I think you could really get that that Metroid feel onto a Mario Kart track. Well done, Dan. Yeah, well, I mean, if you're gonna go down that route, they might as well throw in the real deal Captain Falcon. Um, they've already got the F-Zero tracks. I, I right. Those have been very popular. I can't imagine them not wanting to do another one if they happen to have more Mario Kart DLC. Um, and he'd be a kind of a good kind of nod to the fans of those tracks. Yeah, uh, so, my first pitch is Kirby, because Kirby oh, would be amazing. And, super appropriate. Yeah, and he would fit really well with the context of Mario Kart, I think, especially given, like, Kirby's Air Ride. Yep. Um, with, and speaking of which, I think they could just pull a track out of Kirby's Air Ride and make that a Mario Kart course. Um, Checker Knights or, like, the Beanstalk thing. There's a lot of great music there and a lot of, you know, they're fun race courses, and that would be a great way to revisit the idea of Kirby's Air Ride without, um, without having to, like, actually invest in a new game. But then, on you know, on the other hand, what also could be really cool is if instead of doing that, they decide like, hey, what if we do a Kirby's Epic Yarn course or a, a Kirby and the Rainbow Curse course with all these different art styles? I think that that could be really cool with Mario Kart. Uh, first choice is still Kirby Air Ride Track. 
that's that's an interesting angle on it, because uh, you know when you think about it that way, it'd be it'd be kind of cool to see a Diddy Kong Racing reference kind of make it in. I was uh, thinking that. Yeah, that's a awesome. franchise that's been gone for so long, and I know we've been yeah. hearing rumors that it might be making a resurgence, but it, that obviously hasn't happened yet. And this would be kind of a mm-hmm. great way to kind of prepare fans. Yeah, you know, like we, we've talked about how maybe the uh, F Zero courses are sort of to gauge interest for a new F Zero game, and they could do the exact same thing with the uh, Diddy Kong Racing track. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, can we get Conquer as a playable character too? Then while we're at it, <laughs> that'd be <laughs> Conquer nice. and Banjo and Tip Top. Yeah. TT. 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 <laughs> I was actually thinking would be good for Mario Kart. <laughs> I feel like they should do another track from The Legend of Zelda, but someone more creative than me should decide what it is. <laughs> um, Ganon's Castle. Goron well, Racetrack. Rather, Ganon's Ooh, Tower. yeah, Goron. That's good. Ooh, Goron's, Goron's good, too. I'd like to see something that kind of explores more of the variety in Hyrule, uh, mm-hmm. rather than maybe just a themed track. So maybe you have something that's sort of part mountain, part underwater, well, part... Uh, desert i don't know hyrule circuit does go between the field and the castle town and yeah but the that's castle that's kind of forest. like the the lowest common denominator kind of stuff yeah uh, well here, I mean, here's the thought i had that. the lost woods you know especially in ocarina of time sort of goes goes everywhere oh, and connects to everywhere so you know you could have like a lost woods segment that branches off into three paths and each one will take you to a different part of hyrule yes yeah i think that'd be kind of cool i love that idea that is an amazing Hey, I'm on idea. fire today with these track ideas. Nintendo, <laughs> Bam, never mind. Man. Hire me. Let's go. <laughs> um, so my my second idea for a, a crossover like character and stuff would be Olimar and a Pikmin course. I think Olimar would be oh, a great yeah, fit for cool. Mario Kart. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the SS Dolphin car would be really cool. And, of course, a track where you're, t- like, Pikmin-sized and going through this giant world... Uh, I think that would just be so cool. And I think there's a lot of potential for, like, uh, Mario Kart 8 has a lot of dynamism in the, the race tracks themselves, where the tracks sort of evolve as you go through them. And I think there's a lot of potential there with with uh, Pikmin, because in the world of Pikmin, they're building, like, bridges and vines, and, and things are growing all the time. And so I think there's a lot of really cool potential where, like, you know, maybe in the first lap, the Pikmin are building a bridge, and then in the next lap, it becomes a shortcut if you're, like, maybe if you're there quick enough, but if, if you fall too far behind, the bulb orb comes in and breaks it down or something. Uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff I think they could do with a Pikmin course. Yeah, here's an idea. Uh, so there's the, the whole concept is you want to get off the planet before it's nighttime. So how do they <gasps> day to night transition between laps one oh, and three? Oh, that's really good. Uh, and then when you and then when you uh, go through the, the goal, it's you sort of fly into like the SS Dolphin, and then at the end it lifts everybody up. Yeah, and, and, and it's, really it's possible cool. that they could ha- just have the lap three be the ultra dangerous nighttime, and you're trying to escape yeah. before the, the monsters yeah. Should get you. Yeah, and there are a lot of track hazards and stuff. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Uh, one of the other things that I think is, is kind of cool about that idea is uh, Pikmin is a game that kind of revolves around you encountering these kind of everyday objects, but they're mm-hmm. because you're so small, they're so large to you. And they could really right. exploit that uh, with the track designs. We kind of got a taste of what that might be like with Ribbon Road, but the track itself did not really uh, have a lot of those things as features of the track. They were kind of off-track, uh, right. decor- decorative. Uh, right. and, and here you could, you know, for example, jump off of a cell phone, uh, you know, they had that old flip phone in Pikmin mm-hmm. 3 that, that could make right. a good ramp. Uh, there's just so many different objects that they could kind of mesh together to make an interesting track design. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then finally, uh, one that I think absolutely has to happen. It's such a perfect fit, and it would be so much fun, and they need to do something with this series. Mother? Yes. <laughs> Put anyway. Ness and Mario Kart, Eagle Land racetrack, it's like, like Eagle Land Circuit or something like that. Where you're you're racing all around Eagle Land and seeing everything in like HD and it looks awesome and uh, and the music, if you guys anyone listening has played Earthbound and you know the opening credits theme, yes, you know how well that works as a Mario Kart track. Just just live record that straight and put it into Mario Kart. Perfect music. I need this to happen. It's just. <laughs> 
It's, this is one of those ideas where, where I've had this idea and now I will be mad if it doesn't happen. I will be mad at Nintendo for me thinking of this. <laughs> Yeah, that, that would definitely be great. And I also think uh, New Pork City from Mother 3 could be a fun track as well. Yeah, I was thinking that earlier today. I was thinking, uh, like, what if instead of Earthbound they did Mother 3? And I was, man, New Pork City would be great. Well, especially since we haven't had this, like, urban, new urban environment, all the urban tracks in... Uh, well, Neo Bowser City. Well, those are um, old, though. Those aren't new Mario Kart tracks from Mario Kart 8. Yeah, that's true. You know, Toast Prince Turnpike was also a retro track. Uh, that's true. But I was I was kind of thinking that though, because uh, in Mother Three, when DCMC performs uh, Porky's theme, it's like this jazzed up sort of version, uh, and I was thinking that would also just work great for Mario Kart. Uh, anyway, those are my three crossover characters. I love the Pikmin one. <laughs> Must happen. I know it's so I, I get really enthusiastic about these ideas, and and this is what makes me really wish that they did a Nintendo Kart officially instead of just Mario Kart with a couple crossovers, because there are so many great ideas for like racing settings. Then it'd be nice to refresh the item lineup too, because uh, we're, we're, we're all used to the items in Mario Kart, but but there's this point where, where I think that they, they could do, you know, something totally different and totally change up the balance, which I know is something a lot of people complain about. Um, and that'd be, you know, perfect because you're starting basically from scratch. You don't even have to have shells and bananas and right. bob bombs and you can just have whatever. So everybody, this is the end of part one of this Mario Kart DLC discussion. You can check out part two starting tomorrow. Thank you so much for listening. If you like this podcast, please subscribe to us on iTunes or subscribe to us on YouTube at Gamnesia TV for bite-sized discussions from this show. And please head to iTunes to leave us a review. It really helps with visibility, so we greatly appreciate it, especially if you have good things to say instead of bad ones. If you have feedback for Nintendo Week, please send it to colin at gamnesia.com. That's C-O-L-I-N at gamnesia.com. G-A-M-N-E-S-I-A dot com. And remember to send in your questions about Nintendo, about our show. We love engaging with you guys, and we read them and talk about them here on the show, so it's a great way to get involved. Again, that's colin at gamnesia.com. If you can't wait till next week for more of our stuff, you can head to Gamnesia to see more of our gaming news as it happens. We've got Sony, Microsoft, Indie, you name it, and even Nintendo news that we didn't have the time to discuss on this week's show. So thank you everybody so much for listening, and we hope you have another great week. Great week.